They hadn't caught nothing until he got in the boat with them. Now, after he was crucified, watch this now. They wanted to go back to their old humdrum normal life. The resurrected Jesus comes along now, and he gets into their boat, and miracles start flowing again. Ladies and gentlemen, they were never supposed to go back fishing. That old boring, non-successful, humdrum life was never supposed to go back to. It was supposed to be over once they came into contact with Jesus. And I'm telling you guys in here today, the resurrected Jesus provides you with an opportunity to do something special in your life. He doesn't want you flailing. He doesn't want you failing. He don't want you barely getting by. He don't want you stretching and surviving. He came that you might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full. Come on, watch this. He got up, not just so you can get up, but so you can stay up, praise God. Shake somebody's hand, tell them, he got up so I can stay up. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You can not just get up for praise God, but you don't have to go back to your old life. You don't go to have to go back to your old way of doing things. Look at what it says in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind Reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upper call in Christ Jesus. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but I can't go back there. I can't go back to a life of depression. I can't go back to a life of suicidal ideations. I can't go back to a life of doing people wrong. Once God got a hold of me, I can't. Do I have somebody in here? Number five. I wish I had time to lay more into these a little more, man. Watch, what should we teach our children about Easter? The resurrection of Jesus enables us to be healed in our physical body. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Listen, folks, the same spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus. Can I establish this first? The same exact spirit who raised Jesus from the dead as a believer, he dwells in you. And since this spirit dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies. Anything that's dead on your body, anything that's declining on your body, anything that's inoperable on your body, anything, come on, that's not moving like it should, the resurrection provides you with a path to healing. Can I give y'all a testimony? I wasn't going to tell it, but listen, you overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. I went to the doctor the other day. They, they, they diagnosed me 10 years ago with chronic kidney disease, and my numbers were going down six months ago bad, and, and I was at stage three, and, and they fully expected when I come back, I would go to stage four. But I went to a meeting in February. And the man was in the church meeting. He said, someone here has kidney disease and their kidneys are failing. And I had stood up and, and I was sitting next to the man. He didn't even know the whole time through the meeting we were sitting next to each other. I walked up, laid hands on me, went back to the doctor Wednesday, I believe it was. Listen, my numbers not only went up, left stage three, went, to sta you went up to stage two. Can I tell y'all why? Because Revelation 21, 5 says, he makes all things new. With no medicine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But my faith in Jesus, that he said by his stripes, 
The doctor said that they could not, the nurse, their minds were blowing. The doctor said, this doesn't happen. It might not happen for you. But for those of us in, y'all better hear what. It might not happen for you. But we in the kingdom expect miracles. We expect to be healed. I expected when I went in there to have a rejuvenation. She was like, wait a minute. Your numbers were here last year. We fully expected your numbers to be here, but your numbers are up here. That's the God that we serve. I told God, I just don't want to preach this stuff. I want to live it. Do I have anybody in here right now? I don't care where it hurt. I dare you lay your big old hands wherever it hurt and say the resurrected Jesus made a way for you to be healed right now. Come on, put your hand where it hurts. Your head, your heart, your kidneys, your knees, your ankles, whatever it is, your arthritis, your wrist, wherever it is. The resurrected Jesus made a way for you to be healed and I declare right now in Jesus' name, be healed. Number six. Number six. The resurrected Jesus, watch this, levels the playing field. It takes away all inferiority. Once you come into Christ, once you get born again and come into his kingdom, you can't use anymore the crutch of the man. Once you come into Christ and come into the kingdom, you can't use as a crutch anymore the one man. You can't use as a crutch your race. Once you come into the kingdom, that doesn't apply to you. Why? Because of the resurrected Jesus, you are now Abraham's seed. Go to Galatians 3.29. See, we got to straighten all this out. Amen. That's why we can be a, a church of all nations and all colors, because we know once you come into Christ, listen, there is no more imbalance. It's all level across the playing field. You are the most powerful person in the world right now. Ten claps, because y'all didn't get it. If you are Christ then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Let me tell you what this is saying. Number one, you are blessed. Somebody say this with me. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Someone shout it like you mean I am blessed. I'm blessed. Say this. I have the blessing, have the blessing on, my life. on my life. Now it says you have a right as an heir to inherit the same blessing that Abraham inherited, which was Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 in the Amplified Bible. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. Listen, if it applies to Abraham, it applies to you. And I will make your name famous and distinguished. And watch this, you ain't going to have to sell out for it either. You ain't got to you ain't got to sleep your way up to the top either. And you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. And you ought to really get excited about verse three. I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you. And you ought to really get excited about this. I will curse him, her who curses or uses insolent language toward you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed, and by you they will bless themselves. Let me tell y'all something this morning. The blessing is upon you when you woke up this morning. The blessing is upon you when you leave the house. The blessing is upon you when somebody's coming up against you. You ain't got, stop trying to fight everybody. Stop trying to play get back with everybody. Stop trying to fight fire with fire. Keep your mouth closed and just walk like you are blessed.
so what they say something about you? God will deal with them. Let me tell you something. They couldn't stop you if they tried. How do you think how they tried to knock you down time and time again, but you're up here this Resurrection Sunday morning proclaiming that Jesus is Lord because you are blessed. Raise somebody hand in there like the champion they are. Tell them you're blessed. Tell them, raise it and tell them you're blessed. Once you come into the kingdom, it levels the playing field. Once you come into the kingdom, we go up one verse in Galatians 3.28. Listen to what it says. Listen, we built our ministry on this. There is neither Jew nor Greek. This is dealing with race and ethnicity. This is why the Lord told you, you're going to have white people, black people, Asian people, Hispanic people, are coming all over, Latino people coming to this ministry. Because in the kingdom, it don't matter the color of your skin. There's neither slave nor free. That's socioeconomic construct. It don't matter what side of the track you grew up on. You're going to bloom wherever you were planted. It don't matter how much money you have or don't have once you come into the kingdom. It don't matter how much uh, education you have or don't have once you come into the kingdom because you have something in your life called the anointing. There's neither male nor female. There's neither male nor female. And while I'm here, can I just take 45 seconds to straighten something out? In the kingdom, there's only two genders, male or female. Now, I know your president then went out here and made today gender vi transgender visibility day. But if you agree with that junk, you are not in the kingdom. In the kingdom, there's either male or female. Y'all ain't got to clap. See, see if you, and if you offend it, if you offend it, that lets you know what kingdom you're under. And it's time that the preachers stand up in the pulpit and flat foot tell people that God made them male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. This levels the playing field. There's nothing you can't accomplish in the kingdom of God. And you let God get a hold of you because of the resurrected Jesus. I'm telling you right now, you're going to do things in your life you never could imagine. It levels the playing field. Finally, number seven. The final thing we should teach our children about Easter is the resurrection of Jesus guarantees that there will be a resurrection for us. Again, 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and he has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Listen to how it says it in the New Living Translation. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. At some point, and maybe they're too young now, but you're going to have to have your conversation with your kids about this. And I say the word this because I want you to have that conversation with them and not me. And there are those of us who've had to say see you later to some people that we love. In 2017, Easter Resurrection Sunday, at 5 o'clock in the morning, I got a call from my uncle telling me that my grandmother, who I never had one day bad with in my life, even when she whooped me the one time, she whooped me because I did something. But my uncle called and told me on Easter Sunday, 2017, that that morning my grandmother had passed away and went to be with the Lord. This past Monday, 
March 25th, 24, Easter Resurrection Week. My wife got a call from her dad saying that her grandmother had went to be with the Lord. Two and a half hours later, I got a call from my wife saying, baby, we got to go to the hospital because our two-week-old granddaughter had went to be with the Lord this past Monday. And I'm telling you, walking our family through this is something else. And we all have different testimonies, and we all got different ways we're dealing with it. And at some point, I know all of us will say different things to you guys about it. But hear what I'm about to tell you, what keeps us going, what keeps us worshiping, what keeps us praising God, what keeps every last one of us in this service right now, all of my family are here today, including my daughter, is in spite of our tears, in spite of our questions, in spite of our pain, is that one day we know, just like I'm standing here, there will be a resurrection. And everybody that's asleep in him, and everybody that trusted Jesus with their hearts, we all gonna be joined together again. Let me tell you what it says. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 through 17, it says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Now, wait a minute now. What is this teaching us? We can believe this because this is the word of the Lord. And I taught you earlier in the teaching today that we can believe the word because of the resurrection of Jesus. It says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Let me tell you what this is saying in seven words. We shall see our loved ones again. I'm talking about all of us now. I'm talking about all of us now. Yes, we miss them. Yes, we're going to cry. Yes, my family this week have cried a lot of tears. I hate to see my daughter and my son-in-law go through this, but there's one thing that we all can hold on to. Some of y'all have lost some people this year in this last year's cycle, but the one thing we can hold on to, listen, we don't grieve like everybody else grieves. Oh, y'all ain't clapping. Y'all ain't doing me right. Look at here, 1 Thessalonians verses 4, verse 13. It says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Will we grieve? Absolutely. Will we sorrow? You better believe it. It's happening to me even as I teach this message. But there's a difference between how I grieve and how you grieve and how those in the world grieve. We don't grieve like those who have no hope. We don't grieve like those who have no expectation. We have an earnest expectation that one day, watch this, there's going to be a reunion. One day, we're going to be reunited with everybody that preceded us in death. He got up so your mama can get up. He got up so your daddy can get up. He got up so your favorite auntie can get up. He got up so your favorite uncle can get up. He got up so your child can get up. And watch this. He got up so you can get up. This is what the resurrection of Jesus is all about. This is why we gather. This is why we gather. This is why we celebrate. This is why we have a party. Because after a while, that's how they used to say it back in the old days, after a while, everybody in that grave got to get on up out that grave and be called up to meet God in the air.
Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to stand up. And now listen to me. If you're not working in the ministry, can you not leave just yet? But I want you to stand up. Did you get something out of that? And I know the kids, some of y'all were distracted by the kids. Well, guess what? That ought to make you appreciate our children's workers even more. Amen. <laughs> y'all ain't going to clap to that. Maybe y'all need to come volunteer and help them. If you're not, if you're not working, they're, they're leaving because they're working. If, I just ask that you stay. This is the most important piece after the message. Did you get something out there today, though? Yeah. You know, I know I did a lot of hollering. Let me tell you something, y'all. I love talking about the resurrection. Yeah. I get excited because I know this is not in vain. Yeah. I want to talk to some folks in here. You were invited here. And, and sir and ma'am, they really wanted you to be here. They've been praying for you hard. I want to just go back over two things that I want you to hear, and I'm going to do it really quick. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, you can be free from your sins, past, present, and future. And let me tell you something. There are no big sins and little sins. Without Jesus, we are all standing in the position of sinners. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you where I was. And I'm telling you what broke free in my life was all the change that was over me because I gave my life to Jesus. Please keep your kids quiet if you can. Just a little, just hold on five, seven more minutes. Hear me. Great woman, great man. I don't care if you're up and out, you got it going on. You live nice, your bank account nice, you drive nice, or you're down and out. You're so down and out that you have a void in your life. You're even thinking about ending your own life. Let me tell you what's missing. Jesus is missing. Jesus is the one that's missing. Let me tell you the second thing that I said in the sermon I want you to hear. The resurrection of Jesus guarantees your resurrection to go spend eternal life with him. We settle this right now. You don't have to wait until you pass away to go be with Jesus. With everything we're going through as a family, why would I be here this week? Because I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. This is why I still minister after 30-some years because I know there are some of you who have yet to say yes. And maybe, sir, way at the top, ma'am, way at the top, maybe you're saying, I, I, I don't like church. Listen, I'm not asking you to like church. I'm saying fall in love with Jesus. If you fall in love with Jesus... He will send you to the church that he wants you to be. You don't have to be this church. Young man, young lady, teenager, baby, older man, seasoned man, older woman, seasoned woman. Don't walk out of here today and not let the resurrected, resurrected Jesus do what he wants to do. He wants to save you. That means he wants you to surrender your life to him. You've tried everything else. Why don't you try Jesus? Amen. Amen. You've tried everything else. Why don't you try Jesus? If that's you in here today, I'm asking you to get the things that you came to church with today and take the boldest steps of your life. Listen, don't be concerned about being the first one. It's a lot of people going to come down here today. I'm not going to embarrass you. One day, at a meeting like this at a church camp, I left an aisle and gave my life to Jesus. It wasn't perfect, but it was his. Have I went through things? You heard me say this week, I've gone through things. But I don't know where I would be this week without Jesus in my life. I don't know. What gives me the strength to stand here boldly is the Lord. If that's you in here today, I want you to get the things you came to church with. Come on down here right now. We're going to clap and throw you a party. Would you come now? Would you come now? Come on down. 
Come on down. Come on down. Listen, there's a spirit that's keeping these people in their seats. I know some of you want to come to Jesus. Come on down. Take a bold step. Yes, you. Yes, you. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Come on. Keep clapping, y'all. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on. You be the first one. They'll come behind you. Come on. Come on. Come on down. Take a first. Take a bold step. Right here. Just face me. She's not the only one. Come on down. Come on down. This is your day. This is for you. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Come on down. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on, whoever you are. Come on. They're not the only ones. There's, listen. Listen. Come on. I believe there's a dam that's waiting to be broken in here. The enemy don't want these people coming because once God get a hold of you, everything changes right now. Everything changes right now. Would you come? Come on. Keep clapping, y'all. Would you come? Don't be ashamed. Listen, you're saying, Pastor Monty, I want to stop doing some things first. You can't stop doing these things without Jesus. Come just as you are. Tell them, listen, if you don't want to come by yourself, grab your neighbor by the hand. Come on down here and they'll walk with you. Come on, they'll walk with you because in the kingdom, you never have to walk alone. Somebody's been praying for you. Come on down, whoever you are. Children, teenagers. They stand here because the enemy got a hold of them. They know I'm talking to them, but the devil don't want them to let go. Let me tell you something. If you let go and let God, he'll do the rest. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? One yes. He says, if you draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. I've already prayed for you. We've already prayed for you this morning. Now I want to talk to some other people. You know it should be 20 people down here. And I know it's a spirit of this building that's stopping them from coming. But intercessors, I want you to pray in the spirit right now that that dam just breaks right now. There are got to be some people in here. You need to say yes to Jesus. Do not walk out that door and you have not said yes to Jesus. Would you come? If you're here, maybe you've given your life to Jesus. And maybe you're, you're living as if you were never born again. You had already got born again. You already got saved. But you're living your life in a, what we call a backslidden state. You went back on the things of God. Something happened in your life. And you said, man, I'm done with church. I'm done with God. But guess what? God wasn't finished with you. How you know God wasn't finished with me, Pastor Monty? Because you're still here today. And God is not finished with you. And if you want to come back today, let me tell you something. We, I, I was in that state in my life. I walked away from God, but he didn't walk away from me. And I came back to him. If that's you in here, today is the day that you re rededicate your life. He got up so that you could get back up. If that's you, come on down here right now. Get your things you came here with. God is calling your name. God is calling your name. Whoever you are, get your things. Come on home. Come on, y'all. Clap for them, whoever you are. Come on, clap. Come on back home. 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 Come on, give God a praise for him. Come on back. All over the building. There's some over here. Come on down. Don't miss this moment. Maybe you had to check it out first and see what it was all about. Come on back. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. Keep clapping, y'all. They're coming. God knows what they need to hear. Come on back. I believe this is it. He got up so you can get up again. Give him another try. Give him another try. Come on down. I see you. Come on down. Maybe you mad at some preacher. Let me tell you something. That, that's that preacher. Amen. I vow to this congregation. I'm vowing to you. I'm going to live the life I'm supposed to live before God so we can take excuses from preachers out of it. Amen. I want you to know, listen, God haven't done nothing to you. God loves you so much. Come on back. Come on back. Now the dam is breaking. Now the floodgates are open. Come on back. Come on back. Listen. Come on back. 
I see you. Come on down. Come on down all over the place. Come on, y'all. Give God a praise. I knew it. Don't tell me what God. I don't give up on God because he's not going to give up on these folks in here. Come on down. I see you all over the building. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that you will never forget. The day you gave your life to Jesus, the day you came back to the Lord. God is not mad at you. Let me tell you something. God is not, God told me to tell somebody, you think God is mad at you. God is not mad at you. God loves you so much. He's kept you alive. He just, his arms are open for you. He says, come on, come on back home. Come on, bring your whole family. That's for me and my house. That's for me and my house. Bring your whole entire family. Come on, come on, come on, come on, brother. Come on, come on, y'all. Keep clapping. This is it. I told you, I, it was, I told it was a floodgate in here. The enemy, thank you, intercessors. Thank you, intercessors. Come on. The anointing to save souls is here. Come from up the top. Come on up down. Come on down. Come on down. We're not going to embarrass you. Come on. We're not going to embarrass you. Uh-uh. Come on down. I see you, mama. Come on. Come on. Come on over here. Come on. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on you. Come on, I see you. He's waiting on you. He loves you so much. He's kept you alive for a time as this. Come on. Come on. Come on, give him a... You have tried everything else. Come on, come on, come on, young lady. You've tried everything else. I see you at the top. Come on down. Come on down. You tried everything else. God says, have you tried me? Have you tried? Give me a try. I see you, sir. Come on. Come on, king. I love when the kings come. Come on. I come on, king. Come on. I see a whole family. Come on, y'all. This is God. I got one more group I want to, you keep coming, you can keep coming, come on. Thank y'all for being patient, guys. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'm gonna call for those who wanna join our church now, but let me say this. Let me say this, come on, make room for them, make room. Let me say this, I wanna say this, I wanna say this. Somebody's in here today, I don't know who, but you won't come because your heart is broken. I just felt that, I just felt that on me, your heart is broken and you wanna come but your heart is broken. Let me tell you something, he will heal your heart. Somebody already yelled, I'm a witness, he will heal your heart. You know that I was, I'm talking to you at that moment. God sent you here today to come to him and he'll start surgery on your heart right now it's not about a man or a woman it's about you and God come on from where you are your heart is broken he says he'll heal your heart he'll heal your heart hey get, get a seat for her get a seat for her somebody she can't stand that long get a seat for her listen Okay, now I want to call for the souls. Thank you for your patience, guys. Isn't this a miracle? Isn't this a miracle? If you're here today, if you're here, come on, come on, come on. If you're here today, you want to join this church. You're already born again. You're already born again. You're all, come on down. I see you. You're already born again. Your business with God is right, but you're looking for a church home. We're going to love you where you are, whether you're black, white, Latino, Asian. It does not matter. We're going to love you right where you are. We're not going to put no rules on you. We ain't going to do all of that. We're going to love you, sir. We're going to love you, ma'am, right where you are. I'm going to grow you up in the things of God. You're going to come up to a level you have never seen before. If that's you in here, you want to join this ministry, willing to take our new partners classes, willing to be baptized if you haven't been baptized, Willing to join our small groups of Bible study so we can grow you in God. 
and you're willing to get busy because you're already joining the church. You're willing to get busy. If that's you, you want to, you look, listen, God already told you that's your church. He confirmed it during the service. You ain't got to wait for no other sign. He told you that's your church. That's your pastor. Come from where you are right now. We're going to get one more clap for you. Come on down here and become a part. I see you. Come on, whoever you are. Praise God. Praise God. Come on down. Come on down. Praise God. Come on, clap for him, y'all. Give him a celebration. All right, one more. I need y'all to help me, Otis and Elder. One more. One more. Come on down. One more thing. Come on down. I see you. I see you. Come on. Come on. Yeah, God, come on, come on. We got time. We got time. Come on, y'all. I know y'all sacrifice and standing, but this is a miracle. Uh, Evangelist Alicia, Evangelist Alicia, I need you to help us out with those books. All right, now listen. I'm going I'm to pray for all these. Now, guys, I'm going to ask y'all to be patient because we got to file them out of here, and I don't want them to get lost in the crowd, so we're going to get them dismissed first, and then we'll all dismiss. Now, we got a lot of things we got to do today. I was going to do something as abnormal, but I got to remember now. One more thing. If you if you up here in the stands and you know you should be up here at this altar and you haven't come because you didn't know what was going to happen, and you're just one more person, you're saying, Lord, are you talking to me? I'm telling you, God is talking to you. If that's you, that you know you should be up here, sir or ma'am, we're going to give you one more time, one more clap, to get you down here right now, in the name of Jesus, would you come? Would you come? Come on down. All right. So here, here's what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give God a praise for all this harvest. We're gonna, we got a lot of things to do. I want y'all to listen. I want y'all to listen now. Here's to me. You can be seated if you want in the, in the stand. Y'all stay here. Stand here. We're going to pray the prayer of salvation with you. Come on down. I see you. I see you. We're going to pray the prayer of salvation. If you're coming to get born again or coming to rededicate your life, uh, come on down. I see you. A lot of things is going to happen. A lot of things are going to happen. I'm going to pray with you. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And then these elders and these ministers and evangelists, all these men and women, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. We're going to bless you with this book called Born Again in Spirit Field. I want, I want you guys to stay here, and then there's going to be a couple things that happen after that, and you guys can be seated because we've got to walk through some things. We're going to call some names out to bless people with baskets and a free will offering. I want them to stay here and not get dismissed because their number may be called, and, we, and they're going to get blessed with this money as well as the miracle of salvation, too, if their name is called. But let's take care of God's business first. I want you to bow your head and raise your hand. Now, wait a minute. After we do all of that, we get ready to dismiss. We're going to dismiss you guys. I want to ask you to go, Sister Mia. Raise your hand high, sister. You guys are going to, she's going to file out. You guys are going to go with her to our connection room. It's going to take a while for them to get out, y'all. I want to hold y'all for five minutes so they can file out, and then we'll dismiss. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads. Raise your hand. Repeat after me. Father God, I come to you now just as I am. You know my life. You know how I have lived. Forgive me, Lord, of everything I've ever done wrong. It is too much to name. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. Live in me and live through me all the days of my life. From this moment forward, I belong to you. Thank you, Lord, for becoming my Savior and my King today. I declare with my mouth that today and forever I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give them a book. Come on, let's give them a book. Come on, let's give them the book. Come on. Now, everybody in the house, you may be seated. You may be seated in the house. They're giving them the book now. Just, just wait with me, guys. We're almost there. We're almost there. I want to call out the numbers now for those that's going to get these six Easter baskets. Come on, guys, just be a little orderly. If y'all can stay here, guys, it'll be great. If you can stay here, just stay here. Just stay here a few more moments. Please, please, guys, please. Are y'all ready? Is six of them? Yes. Six of them. Yes. 
If you have the ticket number, come on, we're moving fast. Listen, listen, everybody. 591538. 591538. Up here. Okay. Hold that. They're going to have to see you in the back. Here's another one. Sister Jackie, okay, we got one. Just bring your, bring your number in the back. Uh, they'll, they'll show you. 605-280. 605-280. All right. Just, just hold it. Sister Jackie, raise your hands. You're going to see her in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the atrium. 605-222. Right here. All right, you're going to see Sister Jackie. Amen. There's number four, number four, number four. 5911290. 5911290. No, not to stay right there. 5911290. All right, you're going to show Sister Jackie at the service in the atrium. Find her. That's, that's how many is that? Five? Four. You got, got two more. Here's another one. 591 591-1295. 591-1295. All right, one, okay, two more. 605, 307. All right, hold it. Last one, last one for that. 605, 301. 605, 301. All right, y'all gonna see now. All right, here's the number that's gonna be blessed with the free will offering today. Here's the number that's gonna be blessed with the free will offering, those for the six baskets. Here's the number. Sister Jack, who they see for the free will offering? Elder Gerald. Elder Gerald, step out here so they can see you, sir. You got because they got to match numbers. I'm gonna give you this number, sir. Did you take those numbers? Yeah, I gave them to Okay. 459228. You get a whole lot of cash today. 459228. 459228. I told y'all don't leave. Four five nine two two eight. Four five nine two two eight. Going once. Four four. I'm sorry. Five nine one one two seven four. Five nine one one two seven four. Five nine one one two seven four. I see you at the top. Let's say Amen. Amen. Elder Gerald. All right, y'all. Let's go with Sister Mia. Sister Mia, let's follow them out of here. Uh, you go start following those people in the red shirts. Everybody at the altar, let's go, let's go. Give them time to get out, y'all, please. Give them time to get out, please. Let's give God a praise for what happened today. Come on, give them time to get out. If, if, come on, let's give God a praise for this. This is amazing. All right, y'all, did y'all get something out of that today? Everybody stand, we're going home. The purpose of my church love yourself and keep fighting is to love the good God, fight of faith. love we'll neighbors, love ourselves. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Children, get prepared to win your bikes, win your gift cards, bring all of your things. Amen.